Mike Barnacle joins us now. Mike, you look at the scope of Henry Kissinger's influence. Twelve presidents he advised either formally or informally from JFK to Joe Biden. Think about that. And within that, as Lester pointed out, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of people object to. Some people call him a war criminal for what happened in Cambodia and Laos as well. So it influential, important, but also a mixed legacy for Henry Kissinger. Mixed legacy, but highly brilliant, highly controversial, helped shape American foreign policy across several decades through, as you pointed out, several presidents. Uh, one glaring era, uh, Henry Kissinger, just, we just heard him say if he had everything to do all over again, he would do it substantially the same way. Well, from January 1969, when Richard Nixon was sworn in as president and Henry Kissinger was his national security advisor, and later as Secretary of State from January of 1969 till 1974, over 20,000 American young people were killed in Vietnam. And uh, they discussed the size of a table with Le Ducto in Paris for about a year and a half. And people were getting killed each and every day. That was just totally outrageous. And uh, history doesn't lie. And his legacy will endure. Uh, his legacy will be honored for several good reasons, obviously, but history ought to reflect the negative aspects as well. Andrea Mitchell, you covered Henry Kissinger closely over the years. What about his legacy stands out to you? Well, and acknowledging what Michael just said, what Mike Larnico just said, uh, I got to know him very well. And uh, just after his 100th birthday, he was at the Council on Foreign Relations giving a talk on artificial intelligence. So the fact that Till, the, till his very death, he was mm -hmm. writing on AI, and uh, of course the trip to China this summer in July to see President Xi Jinping, he was always active and always curious Engaging. and never stopped thinking and working and creating, really. Uh, I do remember a number of years ago at the council, uh, the CSIS, at the, the think tank here in Washington, it was his one of his birthdays in the 90s, and Zig... Mika's dad was in the audience, and that rivalry that went all the way back to when one was at Harvard and the other was at Columbia, and then <laughs> there are different roles in foreign policy. It was two intellectual giants sparring, and they began kind of teasing each other in a friendly but still relentlessly. Still, you were there, Mika, I think, <laughs> yeah. in the audience, and we were all sort of watching this play out. You know, two men. It's still vigorous intellectually, yeah. and it was just extraordinary the amount of intellectual firepower yeah. that he brought to it. The, his late, last book on China was was really brilliant. So, you know, he did. He never stopped, and I admired that as well as uh, he was very sentimental, and and there was a a great sense of humor and a charm, which obviously did. You know, carried him through those Nixon years as well, and and yeah. devoted to his wife Nancy. Absolutely. You, you know, uh, David Ignatius, uh, Andrew was talking about, and you talked about um, about Kissinger as well as uh, Dr. Brzezinski. Uh, I thought it was fascinating looking at Lester Holt's package. Uh, it's just fascinating that you had Henry Kissinger, Madeleine Albright. And mm. Dr. Brzezinski, all three of their families chased out of Europe uh, by the rise of Adolf Hitler. All three came to America, uh, just, just uh, achieving uh, just tow towering uh, heights in, in American foreign policy. I do want to uh, draw a distinction, though, uh, not, not for purposes of, of legacy building or legacy uh, smashing. But just draw uh, some real distinctions to get more of an insight into who Henry Kissinger was. Uh, the, the great contrast between uh, Kissinger and Brzezinski. Uh, Kissinger was a shapeshifter uh, constantly. Uh, he could, he, he, you know, he could be what Nixon wanted him to be, and often was behind the scenes. He could be what, uh, if he was talking to Hillary Clinton or, or Bill Clinton. Uh, again, change uh, in the Iraq War. He supported the Iraq War at the beginning and then uh, moved in another direction. And then 
Uh, of course, he was, uh, Jared Kushner talked to him constantly in uh, 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 the Trump administration. So he, 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 could, he, he could move uh, politically. He was a master uh, tactician politically, uh, whereas uh, Dr. Brzezinski was, well, Dr. Brzezinski. He told you what he thought, uh, whether you liked it or not. Uh, he was he was extraordinarily blunt, uh, but I will just say, and, and I, I will say perhaps this is uh, uh, because I, I've studied Dr. Brzezinski's legacy. Um, um, I think on the big question about the Soviet Union uh, falling, I think, you know, and others have said this, Kissinger was the pessimist, Brzezinski was the optimist. Uh, and, and Brzezinski got that right. Uh, the big question of their time, he got right. Uh, but Kissinger, um, again, Kissinger uh, continued uh, continued in public service uh, on the sidelines for 50 years after he left the White House because, again, he he just was very skilled at ingratiating himself with 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 leaders. There was a part of Henry Kissinger, Joe, that was a, a courtier. Uh, he, he loved being with the powerful. He loved advising them. He was good at it. People listened to what he had to say. Uh, people from my boss, Catherine Graham, to, to presidents over the years uh, were extraordinarily attentive to, to, to everything that Kissinger said or or wrote. Uh, and often it was it was very, very much focused. He was a man for all seasons. Whatever the mm. political moment was, uh, Henry Kissinger had something useful and relevant to say about it. Uh, one striking point of comparison with uh, Mika's dad, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski, is Iraq. Mm. Zbigniew Brzezinski, uh, with Brent Scowcroft, another uh, national security advisor, were almost alone among foreign policy leaders in saying, this doesn't make sense. This is a mistake for the United States. Kissinger went along with it, supported it, as did most people in the foreign policy establishment. Spig didn't, and, and Scowcroft didn't. And, and I thought that was a, a, a telling moment. Just to say one other thing about, about Kissinger, his, his legacy is so full of, of controversy. I've always thought that just as you were saying in setting up your piece, he was one of those great statesmen who came out of the ruin of Europe uh, in the Second World War. He had a passion for stability. He believed that stability in itself was a prize that the United States as a superpower should seek. And that, and that made him in some ways amoral. If stability is your, is your primary uh, uh, goal, you're willing to tolerate a lot of uh, unpleasantness, civilian death along the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he, there's no question, Joe, that he is a man who shaped the world that we live in. Wow. Andre Mitchell, thank you for coming on this morning. I know you were busy actually talking <laughs> about world affairs when this broke uh, on stage last night. And thank you for coming in early Glad to you. talk about the legacy of Henry Kissinger. Coming.